<laughs> oh, my God. Oh, he's such a funny dude. He's such a funny dude. Oh, Lord. I've been laughing all week. I seriously, I've been cracking up every time I see Vivek Ramaswamy and Ann Coulter. Oh, it just cracks me up. It cracks me up. It's the funniest thing so far in 2024. It is the funniest thing. I'm telling you. He finally met the boogeyman that he once said on the campaign trail that he had never seen. Well, it hit him in the face. Stay with me. <laughs> I'll tell you what I'm talking about. <laughs> oh, 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 wow. Oh, my God, it's so funny. It is so, so, so funny. Have you seen this interview of Avek Ramaswamy and Ann Coulter? Oh, wow, man. It, you know why? You know why it's so funny to me? It confirms. What I've been telling you all, it confirms all that I have been telling you all. All right, so we're going to get into it here for a few minutes. But first, let me do my introduction. Hello, I am Attorney Augustus Corbett, one half of the Defiant Lawyers. And each and every week, we bring you at least one legal analysis of some trending story having to do with politics, policies, personalities, Vivek Ramaswamy and Ann Coulter, or pop culture to empower you with the information you need to defy this unjust legal system and to nullify systemic racism. If that interests you, <laughs> if that interests you, please like, share, comment, subscribe, and click the bell. Most of all, share, 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 all right? But yes, I have been cracking up all weekend, all weekend, watching that Ann Coulter and Vivek Ramaswamy interview. It is fascinating. All right, now I have done several videos already on this topic, right? So I did a video about how non-whites try to be white or try to be accepted by whites. So I've, I've, I've actually talked about this. Past couple of days, I did a video on white Christian nationalism, okay? and several others that I have, have done. And it gets right to the heart of this, right to the heart of this. All right, now, so let's begin <laughs> this video. Let's begin this video with Vivek Ramaswamy and what Vivek is going to do is sort of introduce his definitions of nationalism. Okay, of ethnic nationalism <laughs> and civics nationalism. All right, so let's watch that video, and then we uh, watch Ann Coulter respond to him in just in just a second. All right, here goes. There's an N word that you're not allowed to say anymore, but I'm going to say it: nationalist. It doesn't have to be a bad word. We gotta distinguish between two different kinds of nationalism. The first is ethno-nationalism. That's the kind people usually think of. And it's natural because most nations' identities have been built around an ethnicity or a religion or a monarch. And in that case, the track record of history hasn't been great for what that type of nationalism produces, either for a country or for its neighbors. Distinct from that, though, is civic nationalism. And that's the kind of nationalism that I think is relevant in the United States of America because our country is defined not based on an ethnicity, not based on a language or a monarch or a cuisine or a religion, for that matter. Our country is defined on the basis of a civic set of ideals that brought together a divided polyglot and, yes, religiously diverse group of people 250 years ago. And so I don't think that that's the kind of nationalism we need to run from. I think we believe in the exceptionalism of those ideals. That's what American exceptionalism is about. It is a belief in the exceptionalism of the ideals that made this country great the first time around. All right. Okay, so I had to put my headphones on so that I can hear 
what Vivek Ramaswamy is saying here. Sorry, let me get this uh, set up here. Okay. All right. So you heard him define, give definitions for his understanding of nationalism, ethnic nationalism and civic nationalism. All right. And he's making the argument that the country should be all about civic nationalism and not ethnic nationalism. Why? Because ethnic nationalism excludes him from the white conservative uh, tribe, if you will. As hard as he tries to be a part of that tribe and culture, made it clear that him and other non-white people will never be a part of that tribe. No matter how hard they try, no matter how anti-black they are, it doesn't matter. They cannot make it. Okay? They can't do it. All right? So, here's Ann Coulter's response to him. It's Ann Coulter. So, Ann, thanks for coming on, and I'm looking forward to our conversation today. Me too. Thanks for having me. That was a fantastic opening monologue. Uh, I, too, am a fan of yours. I'm going to make a point of disagreeing with you so that it will be fun. Um, You are so bright and articulate, and I guess I can call you articulate since you're not an American black. Um, Can't can't say that about them. That's that's derogatory. Um, And that was a great opening segment. Lots of things to talk about there. Oh, and I agreed with many, many things you said during in fact, probably more than than most other candidates um, when you're running for president. But I still would not have voted for you um, because you're an Indian. This stuff right here fixed my back pain. Now, check this out. I had cancer when I... <laughs> Ooh, I still wouldn't have voted for you because of your race because of your ethnicity, because you are an Indian. I like you. I like what you say. I like how you think. I like how you make me feel. I like how you are anti-black. I love that. But you still won't get my vote because you're Indian. Oh, Ramaswamy. What do you think about that? The people that you have worked so hard to be accepted by, they still reject you. Just like they reject us. So you found out, dude, that you're actually one of us. (laughs) You are one of us. No matter how hard you try not to be, you're one of us. Black and brown people, melanated people, non-European people, non-white people. So all that you have done in your lifetime, Vivek, to be accepted into that club, you will never be accepted no matter what you do because you don't have the stock (laughs) you don't have the stock you don't have the ancestry you don't have the DNA you're still a brown person from India and let this be a lesson for all of you non-white people who work so hard to be accepted by these racist, white supremacists, white nationalists, and Coulter let the cat out the bag. (laughs) She said on their behalf what they really think about even you, Vivek Ramaswamy, who has, again, done everything you can. You've done all the right stuff. You got that good education. Oh, yeah, you made a lot of money. You're anti-black. All of that. 
but you still cannot be a part of the club. Now, what does that tell you black conservatives? And I'm not talking about, you know, black conservatives in terms of people who, again, want to conserve family values and so on. I mean, that's me. I want to conserve family values. I, 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 I want to conserve uh, wholesome homes. I mean, that describes me. So I'm not talking about that kind of conservative. Most black people, as I said in a prior video, are conservative on some level. No, I'm talking about you black conservatives who are also white supremacists in your thinking. That's who I'm talking about. If Vivek Ramaswamy, an Indian, very wealthy Indian, extremely anti-black, cannot be one of them, neither can you. So you are actually selling out the African-American community for naught. It may pay well, but you still are not going to get the thing that you crave the most. Full acceptance into the tribe. So now let's listen to another video as Ann Coulter explains why you and Vivek and others like you will never, ever be a part of them. Okay? Here's Ann. Here's more of Ann. You know, the thing about nationalism, you're totally right. It is like to use the word nationalism. Oh, it's Hitler, it's Hitler. And, uh, you know, Hitler had soup. That doesn't mean we shouldn't have soup. <laughs> Hitler loved dogs. That doesn't mean you shouldn't love dogs. So I think we have to move past this. If Hitler did it, it must be bad. Uh, but I do notice when I was listening to your monologue, um, I, I don't think I do use the word nationalism. I would use a word you used in your monologue, which I liked quite a bit, and that's um, citizenship. There's mm -hmm. citizenism. How about Americanism? Yeah. Uh, I'd also point out that the only people who are not allowed to be proud of their ethnic group um, do tend to be Anglo-Saxons. Oh boy, you can't be proud of being white. Whereas, you know, watch watch a soccer game and see, um, you know, it's Venezuela, we're Mexicans. They don't, it's funny, Hispanics don't even think of themselves as Hispanics. They think of themselves as the country they're from. Um, I think French feel very proud to be French. We saw Macron expressly objecting wokeness on the grounds that this is an American institution, we're not going to import this. Um, so you do see basically every other ethnic group very proud of their ethnic group. Um, and the thing I'd say about America, okay, no, no single cuisine, um, but you can get Chinese food and Mexican food in Paris and Tokyo. Food has definitely migrated across countries. So I want you to understand what she is saying here. She's saying, Vivek, let's not use or let's not fight over nationalism because She's going to stick with ethnic nationalism, whereas he want to and is trying to convince them <laughs> to embrace civic nationalism. So she's saying, nah, let's not go there. So let's let's talk about citizenship. OK, let's talk about that. All right. Because, yeah, let's not talk about uh, ethnic nationalism because she's essentially saying I'm proud to be white. And I'm going to fight for uh, white nationalism. And uh, so let's not go there. Now, we can agree on being, you know, loyal uh, citizens and, and, and so forth. But let's not talk about nationalism because she's not going to agree with him on that. All right. Let's go back and finish because there's something that I really want you to hear that she says here. There is a core um, national identity that is the identity of the WASP. And that doesn't mean we can't take anyone else in, a Sri Lankan um, or a Japanese or an Indian, but the, the core around which the nation's values are formed is the WASP. I, we've never, never had, had a president. A president. Who did have there. That's what I wanted you to hear. The WASP. What exactly is the wasp. If you've ever voted for my father, I'm asking you to chip in five, 10, or even $25 to his campaign. To Let me show you. Wasp equals white 
Anglo-Saxon Protestant. And Vivek Ramaswamy, you're not white, you're not Anglo-Saxon, and you're not Protestant. You are an Indian who practices Hinduism. You are an Indian Hindi. You are not a white Anglo-Saxon Protestant. And you never can be. And so she's saying here, it is the values of the white Anglo-Saxon Protestant that made this country great. And in her opinion, it is the white Anglo-Saxon Protestant and his values that need to continue to guide and lead this nation. And you can never be that, Vivek Ramaswamy. <laughs> you can never be that. You can never do that. Barack Obama is closer to being a wasp than Vivek Ramaswamy because Barack Obama's grandfather on his mother's side, and he was probably a Protestant. I don't know. You know, when you think Protestant, just think non-Catholic, right? So in all likelihood, I don't know, but I believe Obama's grandfather, maternal grandfather, was Protestant. So he was more waspy than Vivak Ramaswamy could ever be. And so that's what she is saying here. And then she references Kennedy without saying his name, because Kennedy was like the first Catholic president. So he wasn't completely wasp either. Because he wasn't pro he was white Anglo he's he was white Anglo Saxon, but he wasn't Protestant. So Vivak Ramaswamy, dude, she told you in your face that you can never, ever be one of the WASP club members. Can't do it. And for that reason, she and many other whites will never vote for you. And that wasn't the first time he heard that. And this is why I think he is trying to, you know, convince them to embrace this this civic uh, nationalism instead of the ethnic nationalism that they embrace. When I did my video on national, white Christian nationalism, I explained nationalism from the ethnic perspective because I know that's how they approach nationalism. I know that, but he was on the campaign trail, and I believe his wife asked a white couple uh, whether they were going to vote for him, and, and the wife finally coughed it up and said basically no because he's not the right color. <laughs> I mean, so that was not the first time. This is not the first time he heard this, and it's why I think he's out here now trying to convince them uh, to embrace his brand of nationalism. It's not going to happen because this country, you know, he talked about the country is based on a set of ideas that makes the country exceptional. Yeah, the country is based on the ideal of white supremacy. <laughs> That's what the country is based on, Vivek Ramaswamy. And you don't want to admit that because when you admit that, then... You become an enemy of the people that you have worked all your life to be accepted by. But that's the ideal of this country. I heard Vivek Ramaswamy say on one occasion, someone asked him about white supremacy, and he, he likened white supremacy to uh, the boogeyman, I think he said, or the Loch Ness Monster or something, and he basically said, well, I believe there may be a boogeyman or a Loch Ness Monster, uh, but I've never seen one, and when I find one, I'll let you know. Well, you just found uh, uh, the boogie woman. <laughs> you, you just found the boogie woman. <laughs> and she told you to your face that because you're not a wasp, you cannot be one of them. All right, now, let me just show you So that's what a wasp is. 
And here's this thing, ethnic nationalism versus civic nationalism. They are ethnic nationalists. I explained that in my video. I explained in my video about white Christian nationalism that it is about the ethnicity with them, not the civic stuff. Okay? In fact, here's a little portion of my video where I talked about how I heard a black person say he was a say he is a Christian nationalist, but listen as I explain it. I heard a black the other day say that he too is a Christian nationalist. He couldn't say white because he's black. And he explained it this way. He said that he's a Christian and that he is a nationalist in the sense that he loves America. That's not the type of nationalism in white Christian nationalism. Loving your country is fine. That's patriotism. That's okay. Nationalism is based on ethnicity. It is white Christian nationalism. It is the love and belief that the white European race is superior style of nationalism. That's what a nation is. A nation is a group of people who share heritage, ethnicity, culture, and this black and no other black person share European ethnicity. So when they support white Christian nationalists, when they support white conservatives, they're not truly a part of that because they don't share the most fundamental part of white Christian nationalism, the white part and the nationalism part. Okay, so that's what I said in a video um, just a couple of days ago, right? And, you know, Ann Coulter, she confirms it, right? So it's not enough for these non-white people to love America. That, that's not enough for them to be accepted into the club. And here's why. <laughs> because to protect this country and its white supremacy and white privilege and white power, you got to be one of them. That's the way Ann Coulter looks at it. That's the way they look at it. Right? You got to be one of them. And for them, it's not country first. It's white first. And no matter how hard Vivek Ramaswamy and Tim Scott and Larry Elder and, and Clarence Thomas and Candace Owen and, and all the rest of them, no matter how hard they try, they cannot be wasp. When I did that white Christian nationalism video here a few days ago, I talked about some of the earliest founders of this country. Cotton Mather. Remember I talked about him? And several others. They were wasp. They put the wasp in wasp. <laughs> I mean, they came here from Europe to establish their version of white Christian nationalism. And that is at the root of this nation. And Ann Coulter gave Vivek Ramaswamy a lesson, a lesson in white Christian nationalism. So, I enjoyed watching that video that interview of him and Ann Coulter, he sat there just meek and, and, and mild. And he looked so disheveled and disappointed and let down because he met that boogie woman that he said he had never met. And there she was, blonde hair, blue eyes, in stilettos, I presume, <laughs> complimenting him loving on him and what he says, all his anti-blackness. You remember early in the video, early in the interview, she says, you are very articulate, something that I can't say to blacks, and he got a kick out of that. 
and then she lowered the boom on him. Wow, just just good stuff. Yeah, that's what we're up against. Vivek Ramaswamy, I know he's not going to change his ways. He's going to be out here spending his money trying to convince them uh, to, uh, to embrace this civic nationalism stuff. No, no, because this is not about love of country. This is about love of white supremacy, white power, white privilege. That's what this is about. And maybe he learned that in this interview, although I doubt it very seriously. Okay? And I would remind again, you black conservatives, this dude here doesn't have as much melanin as some of you. <laughs> so... And he got a whole lot more money than most blacks. So if he can't become a wasp, an honorary wasp, you know you can't. All right? Anyway, this has been just delightful to talk about this and uh, <laughs> to see the look on Vivek Ramaswamy's face and Ann Coulter just, just cut him to shreds and all his idealism you know, um, and talk about American exceptionalism and, and this and that. Dude, dude, come on. All right. Anyway, listen, you all go get a copy of my book, Education and Justice. I think it would really, really, really benefit you and your